of what clinical business intelligence is and the uh, connection between clinical business intelligence and the lean performance improvement process. So uh, we start with the, the, the flow of the patient. So here we have a patient, and that patient enters into, in this case, let's use a, um, a full a total knee replacement. So that patient enters into the healthcare system, and they have an office visit. And during that office visit, uh, there are two or three things that are, are done. So there's an office visit, there's a, uh, uh, an x-ray, and there's some lab work. And each one of those um, events actually creates a bit of information that is fed into some mysterious system in the background. Um, and that uh, the patient also, need to know this, walks in, of course, with some information in their own head about their own condition to start with. Some of that may be captured here, some of it not. Uh, the patient then is determined to need to have surgery, and so the next thing that they do is they go into the surgery. And here they have a hospital event where there's a hospitalization, there's an operating room, there's some anesthesiology, there's some uh, inpatient stay or outpatient events, and so these things uh, also, each one of them, generate a bit of information that goes off into the enormous database of uh, healthcare information. Uh, the patient is then discharged and uh, moves on then to outpatient outpatient physical therapy. And so uh, here there's a couple of different uh, pieces of information also captured in a system and uh, sent somewhere. Every one of the things that are done here in terms of the patient's event is not necessarily captured in the system. So there might be three events that happen here, three or four events that happen here, but only two or three of them maybe are captured in the, uh, in the system. And here there are five or six, but of course, there's only a few of them that are actually captured in the system. Each one of these uh, is, is a piece of information about that patient's care through the system. Uh, the same happens here. So um, when they go through this capture process, they actually then kick out the other side, the event's over, we produce a bill. And that bill has a whole bunch of line items office visit, surgery visit, outpatient, all sorts of things. It adds up to a total dollar amount, and that dollar amount is paid by the government or the patient or the insurance company, which, of course, is just the employer collecting and paying on the employer's behalf, the insurance company paying on the employer's behalf. So that's today. All of these are line items that go on a bill. All of these bills um, or these line items actually generate the total bill, and here's the payment process. So enter into what happens with this data. Well, um, typically departments or uh, systems within an enterprise will capture the data. They're not always the same information. There can be uh, stores, there can be many. So uh, here today we are at uh, Seattle Children's and they use Cerner to capture uh, their ambulatory scheduling information, but they use Epic to capture these other two. So information is not necessarily um, easily accessible. Um, and the individuals out on the floor, the nurses and the other caregivers, the other clinicians are out here, um, and they may or may not have access to some of the data. Uh, it all depends on who they are and what, what kind of interface they've been given to the system. If we were to try and describe what is the difference between clinical business intelligence, these, these data collection and data store, this is data collection. We have now gone through the process of actually caring for the patient, and we've generated a whole bunch of pieces of information, primarily for the purpose of creating a bill, but we also have uh, collected this information for historical analysis. But at this point, no one can get at this information, so it's really only data. It's not information. It has no value yet to these people who are out on the floor. As I think about lean and performance improvement, it is this process. It is Caring for the patient, the flow, and improving the flow of the patient and the outcome of the patient through involvement of the caregivers. And the caregivers redesign the process based on the information they have. Sometimes they don't have enough information. They have some limited piece, but they need to know more. So there's a, there's a way to think about this. So as a caregiver, and you name whatever that is. In this case, we'll call it a nursing supervisor. Um, as a nursing supervisor, um, I need why. So I need information, specific information, to do Z. 
So this is the story that we have to think about in terms of clinical information. As a particular person responsible and accountable for achieving something within an organization, I need a specific type of information in order to be able to accomplish an improvement, a specific, a specific improvement. And so here, if we say, for example, that we're trying to solve the problem of uh, too many post-operative or post-discharge uh, infections for total knee replacements, we now can say, as the person responsible for the quality of total knee replacement outcomes, I need to have more information about our patients and the process in order to fix or correct the problem. And here's the action I'm going to take. So Z cannot be just I like information. It needs to be action. What are you going to do when you have that? Too many times we're producing reports that are not actionable. That's waste. So kind of going back to um, what is clinical business intelligence? We now have the lean or the performance improvement. We now have data collection. That is not clinical business intelligence. The way it becomes clinical business intelligence is to create a view, what I'll call a virtual data warehouse, that captures this information. And it probably has some other sources, too. So maybe Premier, um, maybe some other uh, CMS government, uh, Medicare data, other sources that are, would be available, publicly available. It combines them together and says, I'm going to create a view of this information that will be relevant to this caregiver at this point in time when the patient comes through. And that's going to help this person understand how to take better care of the patient, how to eliminate waste from the process of caring for that patient, and how to pass that patient through to the next process on a very efficient and high quality manner. Same here. So this is, this is clinical business intelligence. It's the presentation of all of these data stores in a way that is relevant and timely, meaning meaningful or actionable to this person so that they can take better care of the patient at the moment in time. Um, I think that might explain it, Mike. Are we missing anything? Uh, what about what changes with the uh, health care reform and so we're no longer going to be paid for line items? But Ah, okay, so what does payment reform really mean? So, so today, every one of these pieces, every one of these dots represents a line item that gets represented on this bill. So here's an office visit, here's a lab, here's all the lab results, here's the x-ray, here's all the charges for each x-ray view. Um, that information is captured here. There's a charge for every one of them. That's rolled up to this total bill. The more dots you have over here that generate more lines on this bill, the more money you make. That's today's payment system. That's fee for service. Every one of these is a surface. There's a fee associated to it. The more fees you have, or the more services you deliver, the more fees you have. In the future, there will be one, pay, one, one total dollar amount for one episode of care. So in this case, we're talking about total knee replacement. There will be a single dollar amount that is established for the event, this entire episode of total knee replacement. And uh, that bill will have one line on it. It will say total knee replacement and it will be X. Now, the, the thing that happens here is that if you are a very efficient organization, one who's gone through all of this process improvement and really eliminated a lot of these wasteful dots and actually smoothed the process so that there's not a lot of iterations such as re-admissions uh, um, or extended care because of infection, things like that, you will have fewer line items, which actually gen that, that uh, represents a resource drain on your organization. Um, and you will still get the same amount of money as the guy down the road who has still many, 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 many line items, each representing a resource drain, but not getting any more money for it. So organizations need to become much more effective at understanding, based on information, actual evidence, um, what, are, what are the points of care now, what is, adds value, what is wasteful, uh, how can it be done in a more efficient manner to generate fewer resource drains to achieve the same high quality outcome for patients. And in that way, they will have competitive, long-term, sustainable revenue stream. Okay. Another question comes up that uh, clinical business intelligence or this uh, a problem is uh, positioned as uh, that's an IT thing. Under the, under the current system, where do you see the, what's typically the way that uh, care delivery people and, and uh, IT departments interact as far as solving problems? It's tragic, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you anyway. Okay, so 
So right now, let's just suggest that this is an organization that has adopted a performance excellence initiative. They're using lean. They are going through rapid improvement events or other types of, of uh, quality, continuous quality improvement events, um, and they have some limited information to them, available to them, just based on the very basic screens that are available in these software tools that capture the data. Um, and they want to better understand what's happening in order to figure out what is that. So, um, if they're trying to solve the issue of post-operative uh, infections um, for patients who have total knee replacements, they need information about who are our patients, uh, what are the demographics of those patients, are there any commonalities in the, um, in the comorbidities or, or in the operating room, or what else can we know about these patients to better understand kind of the scope of, of the population and begin to, um, begin to explore potential root causes. So they need more information. That is what we call poll. So they go back to the IT group and say, we really need more information about this. IT, unfortunately, is way over here. And they've got some other priorities going on. They're talking with the vendor. They're worried about ICD-10. Um, they've got to install a new version of their email system. They are very, very busy. And they can appreciate that you want that. So they tell you, you send through a, pay, uh, a project request, and we'll get to that. And so meanwhile, you either have to decide, OK, we're going to sit on our hands and wait. Or we're just going to guess based on what we know and move forward. Unfortunately, there's a lot of guesswork happening in process improvement because the information flow is not flowing at a, at a, at a level that actually supports the need of the performance improvement work. Great. Cool. Thank you. Yeah.